This summer, the sounds of trucks, bobcats, and an excavator echoed down from the high bluffs above the Pine River in northwest lower Michigan as a new kind of sediment control structure was pieced together. Attempting to mimic nature, the Conservation Resource Alliance and its partners designed and built a log jam like no other in Michigan, stabilizing a sand bluff and creating new fish habitat. Amy Beyer explains that this scenic river flows across state land managed by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. There's a really nice trail that runs across the top of this embankment, enjoyed, used heavily by people. And uh, the erosion that set up way back during the logging era has been eating away at the banks here and threatened the trail. And of course, you could just move the trail if that was going to be that simple. But there was an opportunity here that we joined in to both stop the erosion, stabilize the bank in the bottom of the river like it used to be before we stripped all the trees off of it and add habitat at the same time. Among CRA's many project partners and funders is Trout Unlimited. Gary Merrick is a prominent member and a founder of the Pine River Area chapter. The erosion here I was, I've been aware of when a, since I've been a late teen. And as I learn more about the ecology of rivers, I realized this is a problem. Too much sand pouring in to this river and smothering, in some cases, spawning water and reducing the, the fishery. Biologist Nate Winkler is CRA's on-scene project coordinator. The problem we're trying to solve is erosion on the outsides of some of these bluffs. And at the same time, putting in wood structure, a normally occurring component of a, of a river unless it's pulled out as it was here. And the wood provides a physical separation between adult trout and then the slash interior provides a, a mosaic of habitats for juvenile trout and other forage species. One of CRA's working partners, Interfluve, provided engineering design and assistance. Mike Brumfeld is a geomorphologist from Interfluve in Oregon. Every project starts with design criteria. Here we had some eroding bluffs and we wanted to uh, slow the bluff erosion, reduce the sedimentation while at the same time uh, creating some fish habitat. So what we did is we came in and surveyed the river and completed some hydraulic modeling and then did some engineering calculations to determine how to design it, the, the configuration, the ballasting for the wood habitat, and um, came up with a design. We're here today to, to build it. The project starts at the end of that silt fence it's three layers of large logs, up to 30 feet long with root wads attached and about 26 inches in diameter. And it's stacked on top of each other, three, three layers deep. And inside of that is slash, logging slash. And the whole thing is ballasted by individual boulders. There's several different ways you can ballast large wood. If the wood's big enough, you don't need any ballast. It's all related to the hydraulic energy and the flood stage in any given site or river. At this location, with the size of the material that we had to work with, we had to ballast. So boulders, chained to boulders or piles and threaded rod are methods to ballast large wood and make sure it doesn't float off site and meets the objectives. Here, uh, we wanted to stabilize the toe of the bluffs and we didn't want the wood to move, so the boulders and the piles all connect everything together as one unit to stabilize the tow and create some great fish habitat. And this project also has a third component, which is restoring hydraulic function to the pine. Wood in a river is somewhat like a shock absorber. It takes the energy out of high flows and, and distributes it, and that is historically been very important. Pre-European settlement, you know, the river was just chock full of wood. What we're dealing with now is a post-logging era situation where they took all the logs out that were in the river so they could float saw logs downstream. And it's really monkeyed with the, uh, the channel morphology. And so putting the wood back in like we did down there helps again, to absorb uh, flood energy, uh, induce scour, so you can get deeper holes around those pieces of wood. 
Also important uh, fish cover. Yeah, the fish habitat will come over time as the uh, energy of the river uh, goes up against the wood. It'll scour a hole and then the wood provides cover habitat at different, different stages of the river. So at low flow, it provides really good cover habitat in pools. At high flow, um, the wood uh, provides refuge areas uh, the, the fish can get into and, and um, with lower velocities. And those same attributes also stabilize the toe of the bluff. These rivers are so important to the Great Lakes because they carry the lifeblood, you know, and they keep the whole body healthy at the Great Lakes level. So we have good science to support this strategy of repairing rivers from stem to stern, from the headwaters all the way to where they flow into the Great Lakes. And this project is one of those examples. The climate benefits are fundamental to the design of the work and fundament fundamental to the driver for the work in the first place. We get more heavy precipitation events. We have more erosion, more stresses and strains on these harmed waterways than ever before. And the costs of you know, responding to these emergencies and blowouts and washouts of bridges and, and banks and so forth, um, it's, it's much more effective to be proactive about it and try to treat something like this before it costs so much to go in and repair it in a hurry.